Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to a brand new video on Dragon Ball Z Universe 2. My name is Ben SG, and I hope you guys are having a super awesome day. In this video, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of being able to finally customize cast characters and change their stuff around, their colors and their moves. We're going to take one of the cast characters that is my favorite and customize them up a little bit then take them into a parallel quest and see if it's cool or not and then we are going to have a heart to heart on whether or not this is really good for pvp let's get right into it Alright, so you guys already know the character that I chose to customize is Hit. I've been playing a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters and I think seeing Hit in all white is super dope. I think that being able to customize cast characters is the dopest idea since Tapion and I am super glad that they did it. I was really hoping that this was going to be a thing at the start of Xenoverse 2, but I'm glad it's a thing now, which means that we're going to have a lot of hope for Xenoverse 3. If they make it, they're going to add all these things. However, there are some things that I hope they don't translate from this update over to Xenoverse 3 if there is going to be a Xenoverse 3. So uh, let's get into this cast character customization when it comes to changing their skills. This is super cool. Now, if you see me play Hit a lot of the times in the past, I don't use any of Hit's moves. Like, the only move that I use out of Hit is his time skip. Everything else, I just do his little infinite combo and try to kill people that way because I think it's it's actually the best way that I know to kill somebody. But I think it's really cool now that you can actually change his moves. And I think it's really cool that you can unlock these things with TP medals. Now, that's really dope. And I don't kind of dig how you have to or you have the option to buy them with PSN cash. I mean... I get it, there are people who probably don't have time to spam the game like uh, you and me, but let's just face it, if you're getting TP medals for fighting people in PvP, everybody should be millionaires when it comes to TP medals, because you guys love to spam the fights in uh, Xenoverse 2, like it's uh, life is yeah, sometimes, which I totally don't understand, but hey, that's your prerogative, that's what you do. But, uh, so I would never used any of, of Hit's moves, and I thought it was, it's kind of unfair that the version of Hit that's not, you know, Awoken Hit, he didn't have the Sledgehammer and stuff like that, because I think that version of Hit is a little bit more fun to use, because he actually has, like, attacks and stuff like that, and I've seen people that are really, really good Hit users in Xenoverse 2, and they're able to use that first build of Hit and do some pretty devastating things without the, uh, benefit of having the Awoken skill pure progress and honestly i don't know how much pure progress really helps you in the grand scheme because hit is technically his time skip is pretty weak when it comes to to damage you have to be pure progress to the max for it to actually you know sort of um scale with some of the other ultimate attacks there are out there so i do like the fact that you can change around some of his moves and that they added the little burst thing but that whole burst thing we'll talk about that in another video as a matter of fact probably tomorrow i'll upload a video giving my full dissertation about that burst thing that they added i and i gotta tell you right now it's it's not gonna be good <laughs> all right all right so um so I'm not too exactly sure what this balance type, combo type, you're changing your stats around, your, you know, whatever's around. So you can make him be a, 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 a melee attacker, you can make him be a key attacker, which doesn't have very many key moves. So I think that's pretty cool that you can change that stuff around. I do like how you can change everything around about your cast character that you want. I think that is that is really good for this game. I don't know, I just there's nothing else really to say about it. I mean, I, what are your opinions on it? I know a lot of you guys who play Xenoverse, you don't like to use cast characters, though. When you guys translate it over the fighters, you guys love using cast characters, right? Am I right? <laughs> well, I know because Ventus, there, there are no no CACs in, in fighters. If there was, I'd make a CAC. I get it. Yeah, so uh, I think it's cool. I, as soon as I saw this, I had to go to Gotenks because, like, in Dragon Ball Fighters, you can get Gotenks with the black. And then, of course, with Cell, you can change his color. I think the red version of Cell is the dopest over in Dragon Ball Fighters. So, uh, Basically, a lot of things that I've seen in Dragon Ball Fighters, I want to translate over here to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 and sort of, I don't know, bring the two games together. And I kind of get the impression or the feeling that that's what they were sort of going for. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I mean, I'm interested to hear your opinions. Do you think that it was totally coincidental? They had all this stuff planned months before Dragon Ball Fighters released. I mean, I know Bandai Namco had something to do with Dragon Ball Fighters, a lot to do with Dragon Ball Fighters probably. And, you know, this is sort of their their Dragon Ball baby, uh, Xenoverse. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's some similarities or just 
purely coincidental or if they meant to do them because they know they have such a big following over in fighters and they wanted to bring those fighters over to Xenoverse, which I think if that was their intention, they did a really good job because being able to custom... Listen, this was the deal maker for me with this update. UI Goku was cool, Android 17 was awesome and all that good stuff, but this right here the character customization and being able to use those customizable characters in a game that was the deal maker for me i think that if not for that i might have would have just probably got dlc 6 but not really you know played it too tough but now that i can customize my cast characters i think this is awesome i think this is great i can't wait to see if they update this a little bit more in the future because i know there are some characters that you can't customize so i hope they are able to customize some characters see i made the goku and the black there because i definitely think the goku and the black and gray over in fighters just look super awesome all right so i chose hit for my character for this parallel quest and i chose the two characters that i did customize their colors i didn't go into the detail of customizing goku's move set and gotenks move set which i can't wait to do because i think that gotenks I don't know. His move sets to me and all three of his build sets, they're kind of uh, kind of jank. Like the uh, Super Saiyan 3 or, or Super Saiyan Goku from, well, I can't even call him Super Saiyan Goku. GT Goku, the Kid Goku. Like his move set on all three of his things were so messed up. And I'm just like, man, I wish I could use this version of Kid Goku, but have this build on him or have this move, that move. I don't know, just a bunch of things that, that just, they, they answered a lot. And I know there are some limitations when it comes to what you can and can't customize on these characters. But I mean, it is what it is. And I'm glad that they made it. So I, for one, can go down in the book saying I am happy with this part of the update. All right, so let's see how this works in an actual match. I've got Dragon, no, Godfist on <laughs> Listen, why? <laughs> why? Godfist was already super OP already, and to put it on OP hit, like, that's ridiculous. Like, having hit with Godfist and Sledgehammer at the same time, like, that's crazy. Like, all they need to do now is give him a Kamehameha Blast and Hit will be just the super OP. Like, they might as well just make Hit a, a, a CAC character, you know what I mean? I, I think that's sort of what this all is, is culminating into, is being able to have full customization over cast characters. And I think the, the general idea behind it, or at least I think that this is what should be the general idea behind it, if they can't make it to where your CAC fights like your mentor you are able to take a cast character and make him do essentially what you want him to do within the confines of the dragon ball continuity so like you can't take a hit and give him special beam cannon because he never learned special beam cannon i get that so i think that's really cool i do want a bit more customization options for the characters as far as skills go and i think it's really dope that you know, hit can take these basic skills like uh, meteor, meteor uh, was meteor crash. Meteor crash is a really dope skill, and actually, hit does. Me I don't know if they updated meteor crash or it does something completely different. But I'm just trying to do meteor crash in this. And by the way, don't roast me too hard because I had not played Xenoverse two legitimately in like a month. I was hard on the fighters, and I know there are a lot of you out there who, when Dragon Ball Fighters came out, you guys put Xenoverse to the side and just went ham on Dragon Ball Fighters. Hey, if that's you, let me know that down in the comments. I'm actually interested to see how many of you watching this video can legitimately comment and say, yeah, man, when Xenoverse 2 was, was out, it was my thing, I was doing it, but when Fighters came out, I sort of shied away from Fighters, or Xenoverse, and went to Fighters, and I forgot how to do crap. Like, I legitimately forgot, you know? Um, <laughs> I was talking to uh, at least one person, uh, Izzy. He was like, man, I got Xenoverse 2, but I've been playing Fighters so much, I forgot how to play Xenoverse 2. And I'm right with you, man. I 100% forgot how to play. I forgot how to do ultimate attacks. Like, it's just ridiculous. That's why I am so scared now to go online in a PvP match with, like, anybody. Because I know it's going to be one really big molly whooping. I'm probably going to wait for the homie DZN11 to uh, hop on this weekend, do some PvP matches with him. So definitely, uh, if you're looking for more Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 content, it's coming. It's coming. Stay tuned to the channel if you are subscribed, or maybe you unsubscribed, and you're like, because you stopped playing Xenoverse, subscribe again. Xenoverse is back, baby! Bandai Namco and Demps, they did it. They did the damn thing with this update. 
They did the damn thing with this update. I haven't actually had a chance to play with UI Goku. Let me know. Is he is he all that and more like on the comments? It just you know what, man? Let's talk about this PvP thing for a second. All right. I am legitimately, and I know I say legitimately or not, but it's the best word. I am legitimately unsure about the state of player versus player in Xenoverse 2 now. And that is because of everything that has been added to the game. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole burst thing. Like I said, I'm going to make a video about that tomorrow. So stay tuned for the next Xenoverse 2 video because I will be talking about this burst thing that they added. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about having cast characters because one of the things that I felt safe about cast characters, and this is sort of in contradiction to what I was talking about earlier, being happy that you could customize cast characters. Oh, there's that meteor crash. Oh, that meteor crash looks so dope on hit. Oh, God, thank you. Listen, if anybody from Ben and M Core Dimps are watching, thank you so much for being able to do this. Like, you guys have no idea. Like, you guys have made my day so much of me being able to, to customize cast characters. However, on the flip side, uh, burst mode why I, I i'm gonna stop talking about burst but um one of the things that i did like about cast characters you knew exactly what that cast character could do there were no surprises like with cac's like that's the main thing that i didn't like about cac's in the beginning is because you didn't know what to expect you didn't know if this person that you're gonna fight his cac is gonna have a super cheese build and your build is not prepared to to deal with it or maybe your build was overly prepared to deal with it so you had to go into a xenoverse 2 pvp match you know built to combat cheese and you had to fight cheese with cheese you know you had to do it that's why i kept the fake blast on my cac because i never knew what i was gonna get you know so um i don't know this adds a another another faucet another depth another dimension to oh wow did you see 16 he grabbed me when i saw that i had painful flashbacks to dragon ball fighters seeing 16 pick you up because oh man let me tell you if you haven't played dragon ball fighters yet and even if you have that android 16 he's a he's a monster not a monster, a monster in Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, it was it's just a relief that he's not a monster in this game. But um, I, I guess I mean that's all I really have to say. I just really want to hear what you guys have to say about this character customization in the comments below. Do you think cast character customization is a good thing? Like I do. Like fifty, like seventy percent, I think it's a good thing, and the other like thirty percent, I'm not too sure about. But for the most part, I am genuinely happy. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll see you next time.